5.30, so we're going to call the monthly board meeting to order. And the first item up, uh, Ms. Pete is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Our mission statement tonight uh, will be read by Mr. Butch Allen. Bubba County Schools will provide quality educational programs and services to ensure student academic and vocational success. Okay. I'm guessing no public comment. Okay. Uh, approval of the agenda. Anything, everything set? Mm -hmm. Anybody got any changes you need? Move okay. approved. Okay. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to this agenda? Okay, that's, now we have one. Approval of minutes, and you'll see two attached for August 2nd meeting. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to look over those. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any questions or response? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed to that? <coughs> okay. And that'll carry us into one non-action item, and uh, I think Dr. Phipps has something to say to us. This, this is just an update to let you know of, of a new uh, policy change that's occurred at the state school board level. Uh, in, early, in early August, they voted to allow sixth grade students to participate in middle school athletics with the exception of in the area of football. And in, in preparation of the conversation, Becky Taylor, who's a member of the state board, asked me for feedback, and I, and I gave her my personal opinion, but I said I really would rather talk to, to the ADs and to the principals and superintendents in the region to let you get a feel for how individuals think. And we did a superintendent survey, and the large majority of superintendents aren't in favor of allowing the sixth graders to participate, with the exception of the districts that are really small that may not have recreation departments and things like that. Um, the principals at our leadership meeting uh, last week or the week before unanimously agreed that they shouldn't be, be allowed to participate. So I'm just bringing this to you because it doesn't require action, but right now we don't allow uh, sixth graders to participate because that's what the state board guidelines have been. And at this point, don't intend to change that unless we're asked by you all to take a look at it again. And there are pros and cons on both sides of it, but um, I, I feel like the issues that the principals and the athletic directors have probably outweigh any of the benefits at this point in time. I talked to Ethan Linker over in Pitt County, and they aren't going to do anything with the exception possibly down the road of, of cross country, but he hasn't even made that confirmation yet and doesn't know how long that would take. So uh, football's off the table anyway, but then the other sports, uh, they're able to because of the charter school participation, I understand, but just wanted to let you all know uh, that in case you get any phone calls. Okay. Any questions or comments? So all things stay the same. Well, we found out about it on August the 4th right. after physicals had been done and, and we were already in the process of things that need to be done. If we need to revisit it at some point moving forward, I'll be glad to bring it back up. Okay. I can see where there are some sports yeah. and certainly uh, our middle schools tend to be on the full side so that there's not much of a shortage of athletes. But in some sports, soccer, baseball, softball, if they're not playing for the school in the sixth grade, they're playing on a travel team if it's important mm -hmm. to them. So, um, so yeah, if they... If they want to bring it back to us and have a justifiable reason, you know, if they can't make a team because they're too short and they have five, six graders that would like to play, I don't want to see any of our middle schools not be able to field a team. But right, but anyway. we hear that exception in those next right. Okay, just wanted you to be aware. Okay, that carries into the discussion action portion and. Uh, Dr. Phipps, you're still up. This may be a good segue into <laughs> item 5.2 on the capital as yeah. well, but. Uh, you all know Matt Rauschenbach came in and made some, a couple of presentations and they've talked with us about the Save the, the, the Pool initiative with the dehumidifier and we've not actually talked about it or taken any action. I just wanted to find out that, what the desire of the board is and it may be to not do anything or it may be something I just wanted to, to bring that back up so that we could have some closure so that I could report to them if there was any action or if there was no action to be taken on our part. Okay. Um, no, we, we're just looking at action on the just to whether we're going to do, pursue doing it or a not. capital type thing or the the action on doing the having the, t the team be able to use the facility yeah well, the, the team we felt like we were going to move forward it's, it's a significant increase over what we've had before right. uh, because of the cost of using the facility but what we're talking about now would just be more of a capital item that would be for that particular dehumidification project that they have 
Didn't the fee for using it go from maybe fifteen or eighteen hundred to over seven thousand? Isn't that correct? Eighteen to seventy five odd hundred dollars. Mm, right. Which was a pretty big increase. That's a big jump. And they also originally was twenty five thousand dollar donation and last time they came back and asked us for twelve five, they had mm. reduced it. That's right. Um, well they reduced one thing and then they went up on the <laughs> usage well, fee. On the other, as far as the usage fee, I I don't think we got a lot of choice there because no, we, don't we, don't. Have, we don't have another pool to use. So with that one, you don't need our okay we, we to move forward on, on that. If you want to, we'll give it to you, I guess, or ask the board to. But as far as the, the uh, donation, um, I, I so, mean, until we know what we're moving forward with our projects, I don't see how we can commit to anything because, you know, we, we just last meeting approved where we cut back from 1.8 million to 990 on our capital, and we haven't. But you're even, just asking tonight for to that, so. us to keep it open to yeah. keep the discussion open. Is that what the action well, is? I didn't, I didn't know if you wanted to, to make a decision to not do anything or to, to table it, keep it out there, and come back to it later. Or can we I, I make that decision? Can we decide that later. at this time we cannot commit to giving right. them any additional funding other than the usage fee that we are, you know, going to be responsible for? But we are willing to revisit it if we see our capital uh, okay. funds increase. Do you, do you want to make it into the form of a motion? I make a motion that for now we table any sort of donation or contribution to their Save the Pool Fund. However, we will continue to support the usage fee. I would second that. Okay. Any last questions? Discussion? Okay. If not, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, Any opposed to that? Okay. Thank you. Uh, stand capital updates. And Good afternoon. You want to just look at the update portion itself rather than yes, the sir. schedule attached? Just the update okay. to start with, okay. and I'll get to the schedule in just a second. Um, just to give you a brief update of what was completed since last um, update, SW Snowden locker room restroom innovation. Um, GW Walker and Son has completed that project. They did a great job. looks very nice. Um, plant operation is working with the custodial staff to get these areas painted. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. <laughs> cost of the project was thirteen thousand four ninety eight, and we had budgeted amount of thirty thousand. Washington High School bleachers for the visitor side they were installed on eight six. Um, we have not re yet received an invoice, <clears throat> and I will report back the final cost and update. But the budget amount was twenty four thousand, and the quote for installation and the cost of the bleachers was 24000 so um, any questions about those two? Um, projects we have in progress in Eastern Elementary, Pod 1, 3 enclosure. Um, Tuesday the 9th, they completed the removal of the concrete. They started forming the sidewalks on Wednesday the 10th, and they poured the concrete back on Thursday the 11th. Very expedited service. Um, they completed forming the footers today for both handicap ramps. Um, and they plan to have both ramps in place for the first day of school with temporary handrails. And Glass Tech was also on site yesterday doing the field measurements for the loom storefront. So as um, far as the attached schedule, y'all look at it later, but they're actually a couple of days ahead of their schedule that they give us yesterday at this point. And Stan, I haven't looked ahead, so that this question I'm about to ask may be answered. Um, where the benches, the long uh, aluminum benches are for carpool line yes, it appeared I went to look at the sidewalk look great uh, it appeared that they were digging that up are we gonna pour concrete there yeah there's a new walk that goes out to the front gate but they had to stage their dirt they'll put it back to their dirt to the, our dirt original dirt and put the things back and we have money in our 16 17 capital to concrete that but I need to get them out of the way before we do that okay I didn't know if that was gonna all be done at the same time since they've moved the benches. We're, we're doing it in-house they just moved them out so they could get their equipment underneath the awnings they okay. had to get their bobcats and loaders. I don't know if you look at how deep the footer, the footers are almost three foot in the ground. So yeah, they had to do a lot of excavation and okay. to put it back, which is a big overkill in construction three design. Three but it's, it's, yes, we better drive a truck up it with no problem. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Southside High School soundproofing. Um, in the gymnasium, PC Sound started installation yesterday. Um, they hope to have the project completed by the end of the week, if not Saturday. Yeah, and they were working on it today when I went by there. And yeah, they started yesterday, and one of the um, young gentlemen that was helping his grandfather pass, so they had to pull out yesterday about lunch, but they came back yeah, this they morning. they were working today, yeah. and they were making progress. How it works is still beyond me, but it does work. 
Northside High School um, agriculture classroom installation has been completed by Advanced Air Solutions. Plan operations, we were to install electrical. It's been installed and we're waiting on a breaker that has been ordered. Um, once we do that, Advanced Air will come back and do the startup and actually bring the unit on. So it will be up for the start of school. Good. That was my question. Um, Washington High School paving. Um, ST Wooten arrived on site this morning at 6.30 a.m and started the needed repairs, and as of 4.30, it was paved and completed. Uh, Any yeah, questions? I rode, I rode by there, it was good. We had a few people to drive through the tack and track our tack. <laughs> they would not they stop. We had it barricaded. They drove around the barricades <laughs> and through our parking lot. And oh, yeah. So we have a few tar trucks out through the parking lots. If you see those, they were not the construction guy's fault. They drove around the grass and past the barricades. and. They could not stop them. So. They'll stop next time after they clean all the tar off the car. Yes, sir. <laughs> and they made note of the license number just in case they did file a complaint later. Yeah. So. Any questions about those? Nope. Um, you want approval for a $475 job? Yes, sir. Okay. It's been as capital money. I know. You're kind of repurposing some money. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. That's um, fine. SW Snowden. The lobby itself, the true lobby from the exterior entrance and the little canteen area was not included in what we bid it out before. Um, we would like permission to buy the same type product, the same product, the same color, and plant operations and the custodial staff would install that. Um, estimated cost at what I figure square foot with materials and the brushes and everything about $475. Move, I, I move. Yeah. that we approve that second okay. I have a motion and a second on this big project here all in favor say aye aye any opposed to that okay thanks for bringing it to us but below the limit so no. No. okay um i guess that finishes up that so custodial supplies contract yeah what is it we need to Sam, hear about this come back up to the podium uh, to, to help with this yeah. kim was going to be here but had a conflict and and i asked her after we had our last meeting and you all allowed us to move forward with approval of the contract with Safel pending reference checks and the board attorney taking a look at the contract. And as she looked at, at the bids from Safel and from Image, she felt both were non-responsive. There were some issues and concerns in the bid process and terminated the bid process based on that. But because we had two vendors or, or prospective individuals that were interested in the, in the project, uh, she and Stan then negotiated with both of the original parties and Seek, we're seeking tonight board approval for the contract with Safel at the original price with all the issues and concerns uh, that we felt like needed to be spelled out resolved. The only one uh, issue that, that I still need to bring to your attention and ask for your guidance. In the proposal that was Safel wrote and we asked that we have the uh, monthly inspection for the Clean School Awards, what they would like to do is to do a quarterly inspection and then spend that time from the quarterly inspection to the next one doing training and letting folks know what they need to do to, to improve you know, whatever the inspections were and spend more time doing the training working with the custodians than out in the schools doing the inspections. So one option would be to do the monthly inspections like we've been doing or to do the quarterly inspection and, and allow them to do training in between. So and their thought process was if you did it every month for clean school and the school that did not make it didn't have but 26 days or 28 days right. to get whatever corrected and a lot of times didn't give them the time to come in and work with that school to get that problem corrected. So. Makes, perfect sense. Makes sense to me. So what we would have would be a contract that would run two years. We'd go from sep the 1st of September to the end of August, two years later. Um, and it really is a contract that you all saw with the specifications that Kim felt like needed to be addressed, addressed, and they have been. So our, our recommendation would be to go into contract with Safel for the two-year uh, contract as presented in the last meeting. So you would really, in a, in a school calendar year, you'd only have three clean school awards, right? We could do four. We could work it out that way to, to make it Three real. or four. Our school calendar would be three. Yes, it right. would be three. But That's what I'm thinking training. tonight. Yeah. yeah. Get more training yeah. if, if, if we can hold their feet to the fire and make sure that they're coming in training and not. You think we'll that? I mean, you okay with doing yes, getting away from the monthly? Yes, sir. Oh, it makes yes. sense to me, like Mike said. But I, I would like it to be four, uh, just yeah. because give, one, give more schools time. opportunities yeah. that maybe at the beginning of the year didn't get come the close, year. but by the end of the year they have another opportunity. Can you work on that and make that happen? Yes, sir. So as far as dollars, we're back to the same contract, same contract. which was yeah. over $30,000 less than the uh, competitive of the bidder. Right. That's right. Okay, which we've already gone through. 
I'll make a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation. Second. Okay, so got a motion second to go with actually the contract that we've already seen, sure. just with a few changes. Any last questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to that? Okay, thanks, Dan. Thank you. And Don. Okay, let's uh, let's get into the good stuff, Don. Policy revisions. A lot of policy revisions. Mm -hmm. You've seen them. They've been out for a couple of months. Principals have had them for a couple of months. Um, a little bit of feedback to share with you, but not a lot. Uh, if you go through and if you've taken uh, opportunity just to read the little matrix or table that Christine Sheaf provides with the policies, it gives you quite a bit of information that's in there. As you go through this, you're going to see that many uh, federal and state statutes have been adjusted or new laws have been created or there have been some other things in place and a lot of the changes are reflective of that. There's also a new requirement that uh, we don't in involve ourselves in business with anybody connected with the country of Iran and you'll see that in some of the um, work that we have here but just to go through I just wanted to highlight a couple things and, and make sure that you were aware of that. The first policy, uh, 13, uh, the first one is 1310 which deals with parental involvement we'd ask for approval of all of these as presented with any exceptions created based on what I'm going to share with you. There's one statement on that policy that talks about uh, reaching school officials in emergency situations. We found out that was not required and we want to strike that just to make sure that we're consistent with what we're doing with our code of conduct and the information that we have. So if you look at page 5 of policy 1310, item 17 would then be a strike through and would not be included, but all the other would be there and uh, most of this is consistent with what we already have in our reporting with our code of conduct. There are two policies that are new policies that will have to be included and we'll get those taken care of uh, once we get the approvals and everything is, is good to go with that. But if you, if you move on through, uh, we've, we've done quite a bit. I feel good about a lot of the work that we've done in policies and in the practices that we follow with things that we have in place uh, that I think we're ahead of the game with a lot of what we're doing. Kim has looked over all of the things that involve the bullying procedures, uh, some of the things that were in place here we've been requiring our administrators to do with respect to the school attorney for a while. So it, uh, by adopting the policy, it fits in with what we're doing already. Improvement plans aren't required anymore uh, the way they were in the past, so we've got some adjustments to that, but we're still doing school improvement plans, and we're going to do a presentation uh, later in October that I'll talk with you about uh, in a few minutes. The uh, laws have changed with the school assignment pieces in terms of some of the requirements. This is updated to due to some federal law changes with no child left behind and some of the options that were available with no child left behind, which is not in effect anymore. And then as you move on through, I don't want to move through them quickly, but you've, you've seen these and there's not anything that jumps off that I think I need to highlight that, you, that you're not aware of. 6420 is the one that deals with the Iran Divestment Act, and there's several of them that have that and the E-Verify requirement that we have to follow with the federal government. And that's where a lot of the changes are coming from. The only other uh, new policy that I wanted to bring to your attention was 7650. And what I'd like to do is pull that one today. And it, it is an employee travel and other expense reimbursement policy. We do a lot of this already, but there's, some, there's a couple of areas of, that could be contradiction for us. We want to clean that policy up and bring it back to you, but we already follow the procedures that are in place there, so it wouldn't require us to do any more work, but I don't want to create a policy that uh, okay. is the opposite of what we're doing in terms of practice without having some conversation. So as you look at approval, what I would need uh, to ask minus you to, to be to approve everything minus 7650. And then um, the Federal Grant Administration is a new policy. The U.S. Department of Education recently revised the administrative rules that, over, that are the oversight with the mm -hmm. federal grants, and Michelle's taking a look at that. And again, we have a lot of those things in place already, and I feel good about where we are with the work that we're doing. <clears throat> and then if you get to the bottom of that matrix, you get into to minor changes that really are wording only and uh, not any substantial change to the policy or the body or the content <coughs> of what's in the policy. Okay. So we're just looking at approval on everything but 7650. That's correct. I'll make a motion. Back. Make a motion that we approve everything with 7650. Gotcha. I, I had a quick question. I, I did scroll through all these pages, but and I can't find it now, but I noticed, did you take out the including biology? We're going to come to that next. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, okay. Not in, that's not Different in this policy. Room. Oh, okay. Okay, I have a motion, but I'm looking at a second. Second. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to approve all but 7650. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to that? Okay. 
So now we're going on over to uh, 3420. 3420 is a great example of where we've made some changes and there were some unintended consequences. Okay, and this, this yeah. policy change is one that we talked about when we were looking at athletic participation and some of the requirements that we have that are over and, and above and beyond what the state requires. And we had a concern with the participation rate of our students with, with the end of course testing. And principals made a recommendation that we make sure that at the end of the sophomore year, the end of the junior year, going into the senior year, there are certain things that uh, students have in place. It, it either was not communicated well or there were some problems with the implementation of it, but it's created some unintended consequences. And what we'd like to ask you to do tonight is in re revisiting that policy is where it talks about the promotion criteria on grades 9 through 12. We would keep the credits exactly the way that they are, and all we would do for this year would be to strike the word words including English two one English two and math one, and including biology, so that students would not be held back in terms of meeting promotion criteria based on those subjects. That doesn't mean that there's not a need for us to come back and revisit it, but right now the problems that are being created outweigh the benefit that we felt like we were going to get, and we need to do some work on this. So to avoid having other problems with the students down the road if we can set this aside make that change now and right. we'll come back to you with whatever revisions need to be made okay I move <coughs> approval on that recommendation second okay got a motion and a second and any last questions if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. anybody opposed so actions have consequences okay. right that's right <laughs> okay that'll take us to policy 93rd facilities this is a facility construction policy. You know, I hope sometime during my tenure we'll have an opportunity to really do a big facility. Yeah, um, use it. <laughs> but uh, the one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention was, and, and Lynn brought this up, on the last paragraph on the front first page, it says change orders which involve amounts over 90,000 uh, require board approval. We've said that anything that was in that area that was over $5,000 required board approval. And we've been coming to you all if we had a change order that was $5, just to <laughs> make sure that you were aware of it. We're not in the middle of doing any construction and probably won't for some time. We could leave that and revisit if we need to, or we can make that change now and revisit the $5,000. But $5,000 would be consistent with what we're doing already. What's the easiest, Ms. Harrell? I, I think it would be probably better for you to go ahead and change it now. Can we just and go ahead and do that in the, the amount motion? We can is strike through to you, yeah. Approve the policy with that change. <coughs> Okay. And it appears in two places right. and we didn't that change. Right. That's right. And, and to prove his point, they just came to us with a $475 <laughs> item. That's right. That's right. But I so, appreciate it. Yeah, but I, I do. I do. But I understand we don't have to micromanage everything. No, we don't. Okay. Uh, so anybody would like to make a motion to adjust this minus with the change of 90 to Move five. approval. Second. Okay. Got a second. Friend yes, Danny. Michael. Oh, he did. I didn't hear. Michael. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Okay, so that, yeah. that motion was uh, we'll to approve it with the ninety thousand to the five thousand to match up what we previously. We're done. working together then. A tandem. <laughs> gotcha. Teamwork. Y'all so close together. I only heard one answer. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we're our own world of it. <laughs> okay. Well, we're different in looks. So so you got everybody heard that motion. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed to that? Okay. Thank you very much. And that'll carry us to closed session. I, I want to make a comment though about sure. that. I do appreciate Stan and Lynn and all those in that are handling all this being for the public being as transparent as possible. I think they right. um, that's, a, that's a good thing, always a good thing. Um, I move that we go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A1 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under General Statute 115C-321. Second. We have a motion and second to go into closed session. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, we're in closed session. We're back in open session, and the first item up is approval of the personnel agenda that was just discussed. So we will, Mr. Chair. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <coughs> okay. Calendar update. Well, not updates. Calendar if discussion. You take, to click on that, you'll see a number of different things that we've got planned between now and the latter part of September. 
Uh, the first one immediate uh, that I want you to look at is tomorrow night, the new hire cookout. That'll be at Ed Tech at 6 o'clock. We'd like to invite you to be there. And then we've got a special call meeting that we normally have for personnel that'll be that early morning. Uh, and I, I put 8 o'clock. Is that the correct time mm -hmm. that we talked about? That'll be Monday morning prior to, to teachers getting started. And uh, then we have the District 1 School Board Association meeting in Weldon City on the 7th, Teacher of the Year, Principal of the Year banquet. And then our September board meeting will be adding dates to those uh, to the calendar in addition to that. Okay. And Dr. Phipps, I just wanted to add to what you said. Um, Lisa sent us information all about these webinars, and they actually, the first one starts next week. So um, if you're interested, she yeah. needs to know that. Yeah, because there's a fee, and I, I, I wouldn't want her to pay a fee or not pay the fee and we not be able to uh, do it, but to pay a fee and then nobody signs up. So we can take them at home, right? Yeah. Right. You don't have to yeah. come here and do them. Lisa said, Lisa said September the 6th and the 20th were meeting. Or that, that was the meeting dates for the board meeting. Right. Yeah, we've got that. Okay. Has anybody signed up for these yet? Cause it's Not open. yet. Okay. Well, if you decide to. I haven't. I haven't. Just, yeah, we'll uh, when will Lisa be back? I know she's out for a while, but. I'm not sure if you if you let me know, I'll make sure that we get taken care of. Okay. Like Carolyn said, I don't I don't want to pay if nobody's coming, but at the same right. time, if you're coming, we want to make sure that we pay. Okay. And we can, like I said, we can do them at home. All yeah. we got to do is just make sure they're signed up. I, I, this, okay. We can talk we can yeah. talk amongst ourselves after. Yeah. The okay. Mm -hmm. Board member updates. Okay. Superintendent updates. Yeah, I've got a couple, and I'm trying to put this on the update section so you can see as as we go through the the very bottom is a PDF file of the transfers that we have, and we're just going to try to give you that on a monthly basis. But just for the public to know, school starts August the 29th. Faculty and staff will be back on Monday. Our early college has been in session a couple of weeks. They, they're off to a great start, so we're excited about that time. We also have the Stuff the Bus campaign going on Saturday uh, up until noon at Walmart here in Washington. So if you want to come by and donate uh, school supplies, backpacks, that type of thing, we'll put them in the hands of students who need it. We're also going to be utilizing social media a lot more this year, and that will be Facebook and uh, some of the Twitter uh, <coughs> tools that allow us to communicate information and share news. And we encourage the public, if you want to be a part of that, to contact uh, your school, take a look at the school system website, or contact us at Central Services, and we can let you know how to be a part of that. And we're not going to go away from traditional communication, the face-to-face -face and telephone calls that we make. We'll continue to do that type of thing as well. Accreditation, we get really started as the school year gets going, and we're going to be going through that process in March is going to be the visit. We'll be reaching out to our board. We'll be reaching out to the public, parents and guardians and, and stakeholders in the community to serve in a variety of roles, and we just want to thank you in advance for your participation and support. School improvement plans have, and work has been going on all summer, and due to the timing of the accreditation visit, you know the principals normally come in and they do a short presentation for us sometime late in the month of November. We need to move that meeting to the late October to be able to meet the timeline of what we have. So they'll be doing that and we'll be working on a schedule to get that set up. We're working on a, a program for STEM, which is an acronym a lot of folks associate with science, technology, engineering, and math. Some folks have stuck an A in there to make it STEAM with science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And there were several of us from Beaufort County that went to Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago on a trip funded by the Smithsonian to do some work in the STEM area, with STEM being an acronym that stands for Strategies That Engage Minds. And the idea is that we're looking at science tools to try to cross curricular areas. So we're doing quite a bit of work in the area of K-8 science work, and we're excited that we've got a group that's going to be coming together, and we'll be sharing some information with you as, as far as that goes. The CARE Network, this is for folks in the public. CARE is an acronym that stands for Communities Aid in Recruiting and Retaining Educators. A few years ago, we created one of the discount cards. This year, we want to do a dining card, and we've gotten most of those spots filled up. But we want to create a CARE network that will be web-based. And if you have a business or you provide a service that you would like to give a discount to our educators, please let me know, and we'll make sure that you get to be a part of that CARE network. And we're working on getting that done as quick as we can. And then finally, superintendents across the state were asked over the last few weeks to fill out a school calendar flexibility survey that actually went all the way back to 2002, 2003 school years with the number of days that we had, um, what the beginning and ending dates were. The questions were, were good questions that they were asking. This is from the research arm of the General Assembly. I'm hoping that this is going to pave the way towards some local LEA flexibility on working with the school calendar. So I ask you to keep your fingers crossed if you have an opportunity to speak to elected officials 
hopefully they're, they're in the mood to at least listen to what school systems have to say when they requested the survey. We've got a lot going on. It's been a busy summer, but we're excited about the school year getting started and ready to, ready to go for it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes, I uh, forgot to remind you that the, um, the annual session for the School Board Association, mm -hmm. will ha they've changed dates. They um, usually starts on the first of the, the, the week, but they'll be starting on the end of the week this year. They'll be coming in on Wednesday. It'll be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday instead of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I'm sure Lisa may have gotten that um, that notice, but since she's not here to let that's, anybody know. That's November 16th through 18th, correct? That's going to be November 16th through 18th, okay. yes. Okay. And that's in Greensboro? Mm -hmm. That's in Greensboro. Okay. Yeah, that is a change. I will be going to law conference in October, <coughs> legislative committee call, call meeting in August. <laughs> Me last too. month, last meeting, last mm. month. We'll say that. Any other updates from anyone? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second it. I have a motion to second. <laughs> to adjourn. Yes, All in favor, say aye. One minute before seven. Thank you. <laughs>